Hi there, this is Eric Keller for Otoy. In this video, we're going to talk about working with cameras when using the Octane integration for Unity. So I'm using the docking bay scene here, which you can download from the Asset Store. Uh, it's a fairly large scene, but it's kind of a fun one to play around with, especially when you're doing things like cameras. And the way that I've set up my interface, I have our scene view right here that allows me to navigate through the scene. And I've also separated the panel for the game view and stuck it up here so that I can see what's going on. And I'm currently using Octane to render the game view. So when working with Octane cameras, most of the settings you'll find are going to be in the PBR render target. The most important setting to start off with, of course, is the rendering resolution. So if I select the PBR render target and go into the inspector, I want to expand the film settings here and you'll find the resolution for the image is set by adjusting these two values right here. I have the width set to 1280 and the height to 680. I can also lock the aspect ratio so that if I change one of these settings, the other will update accordingly. But I think this is a fine setting for what we're working with at the moment, so I'll just leave it right there. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a new camera to the scene. I'll go to the Game Object menu and I'll choose Camera. And let's give the camera a new name. I'm going to click on it here and type in robot underscore CU for close up. So I know what the camera is going to do. And you can see the game view has already switched to that camera. We also have a little preview window down here. So what I'd like to do is I want to be able to switch between my previous view with the that was shown through the main camera and this robot close up. So I'm going to select the robot close up or the robot CU camera, go into the inspector and under target display, I'm going to set this to display two. That way, when I have my game view set to display one, I can see my original view. And when I set this to display two, I can see my new camera view. So I've currently had the render pause. So any changes that I make, it won't cause the render to update until I hit the play button. So I'm gonna select robot CU, the camera, and I'm gonna move it down using the move tool and get a little bit closer to our friend, the worker robot here so that we can get a nice view of his face. Make it look like he's doing something important in the docking bay. So I'm going to press E to switch to the rotate tool, rotate this around. And there he is. And rotate this around. Maybe move it down. Let's change the focal length a little bit. I want to have less of a perspective distortion in the image. So with the camera selected, I'll go into the inspector and I'm going to go to the field of view setting and just lower this. So you can see it updates here in the game view. So let's bring it down to something like 22. And then move this up and maybe back a little bit. And just do a little bit more rotation. Let's move it down so we can get something slightly more heroic looking up at our friend the robot. That works pretty well. So now I'm going to select the PBR render target and let's close the film settings and expand camera. And I have select camera set to custom. You could also set it to render target, editor, or game. I'm going to leave it at custom. And then I'm going to click on this dot right here. This will open up our camera window. And I'm going to select robot CU and then close this. And I'm going to press play on the render here so that we can see what the render looks like. So here is our friend the robot rendering using Octane. So next I'd like to change the depth of field blurring. You can see it is activated because our robot's just a little bit out of focus and the spaceship behind him is in focus. And so let's go to the PBR render target and go down in the camera settings and find depth of field. So the strength of the depth of field blurring is set using the aperture setting. The higher the aperture, the more depth of field blurring we're going to get. So if I set this to 50, it's going to start rendering again. You can see our robot is completely out of focus. Our focal depth will determine the region that's in focus. Right now it's set to 50. So if I set this to something like 5, you'll see that it's still almost everything is out of focus, but we can see a little bit more of the robot. 
So a couple things we can do. We can sit here and try and guess the number that we want, uh, which can be uh, a fun game, but also get a little bit tedious after a while. Another thing we can do is we go to the PBR viewport. We have a number of icons here that allow us to select various aspects of the image. What I want to do is I want to select the focus region. So if I hover over these icons, you'll see a description of what each of them does. If I select the camera focus picker and then click, say on the face of the robot, it will interactively change that depth of field so that we're now focused on the robot's face. And now we can see that while we can see the robot's face nice and clear, the depth of field blurring is a bit extreme. So let's set this down to 10. We also have the option of autofocus where we can let Octane determine what is most likely going to be uh, the most appropriate region to have in focus. If I turn this on, it's going to override our focal depth. And it does a pretty good job in this case, but sometimes it can throw you off a little bit, especially if you're moving around in a scene. If you're trying to set the focal depth numerically or interactively and autofocus is turned on, uh, you're going to see that you're not going to get the results that you want because this is going to constantly override this setting. So if you're changing the focal depth and nothing is changing, double check and make sure that you don't have this turned on by accident. Let's turn that back off and we'll get, we'll use this uh, focal depth of 6.5 that was determined by our focal depth picker as the appropriate value. So let's do a couple other things. I'm going to select my camera again. I'm going to select the Robot CU camera and move it down and maybe over just to adjust the composition. I'll press E to switch to the rotate tool and rotate this around a little bit. Just trying to get a slightly better composition here. Of course, by moving the camera back, I'm going to throw off our depth of field blurring. I'll select that focus camera focus picker again and click on the robot's face in the render. There we go. That looks a little bit better. And then I'm going to select PBR render target and let's lower the aperture down to something like five. So it's not quite so extreme. Let's talk a little bit about some post-process effects. If I go down here to the imager, I can adjust the exposure. Right now it's set to 1.25, so let's set this to 1. Actually, let's set this to 0.8 to make it a little bit darker. And let's play with the gamma just a little bit. I'd like to make it a bit moodier. I think it's too bright at the moment. Something that like that looks nice. We also have hot pixel removal. This can help remove fireflies from the render. Uh, by default, this is set to 1. What we want to do is the lower that we set this value, the more fireflies will be removed. But it can add a little bit of additional blurring, so you want to be careful how you set this. So let's try a setting of something like 0.25. And you can see that it removes a little bit of it, adds a little bit of blurring to the scene. So maybe that's a little bit too low. So let's try 0.4. That seems to work pretty well. I also want to add a little bit of saturation here. So I'll set this to 1.2, just to saturate the colors. Let's see how well this works. If I set this to 5, should get ridiculous. OK, so that's ridiculous. So let's set this to 1.5. That works pretty well. We also have a little bit of vignetting. If I set this to 1, You'll see the edges of the images are darkened a little bit, so that's probably too much. So let's set this to 0 0.5. And then we also have our response curves right here, which will imitate the color response of various different types of camera. Currently it's set to linear or off, but you can see we have a lot of presets here that we can kind of play with. If I set this to Agfa Vista 100 CD, I have no idea what that'll look like, but that's our result can also try some of the Kodak presets. Some of them are kind of a subtle change and some of them are kind of dramatic. That's pretty dramatic. I kind of like it. So maybe let's set and use that and increase the exposure. That's too much.
That's kind of interesting, although I think now it's overly saturated. So let's set this to 1.2. We can also go to the post-process effects. So I'm gonna hide these for a moment. I'm gonna close camera and expand post-process and turn on enable. This will allow us to add things like bloom effect and also glare. So now we're starting to look a little bit more spacey. If we take it too high, of course, we're gonna end up looking like some kind of disco uh, type deal. Um, neat, but maybe a little bit overdone. Something like that's kind of cool. We can also change the number of rays. I personally prefer fewer rays. So if I set this to one, I can set the rotation, I can set the glare rotation to zero and then we'll just have kind of that vertical glare that looks kind of neat. We can also shift the colors of the glare by increasing the spectral intensity and then adjusting the spectral shift. So you see how that's going to change the colors of the glare uh, which is kind of cool, but not necessarily what I want. So those are some of the settings that you can play with to adjust kind of the aesthetic quality of the render. If you need to create a stereo rendering, uh, of course you can go into the camera settings again and take a look at stereo. So I'll scroll down here. It's currently set to disable. We have a number of presets here. Let's say we want to do uh, side by side. So now you'll see both images side by side for rendering, one for each eye. And of course you can adjust the uh, eye distance, the stereo mode, and you can even swap the eyes. You can also set this to anaglyph, which will use the red and green colors. And then you can adjust the specific colors if you need to. And of course you can also do over under. So it really kind of depends on what your uh, output is going to be for your stereo render which settings you want to use. So let's set this back to disabled. And then of course we can go up here to the type of camera. The default setting is thin lens camera which is a typical movie camera. If I set this to panoramic then it's going to render a spherical map. Of course now that we see more lights in the scene it's going to kind of get a little bit insane, especially with our post-processing. So let's go down to post-processing and turn this off for the moment. So I'll turn off the enable button. There we go, that looks a bit more reasonable. But now we're getting a spherically mapped version of the scene. And then under the panoramic camera, under projection, we can choose from a number of different panoramic presets. So cylindrical or cube map, if we're doing a stereo cube map for VR. Of course, you want to set your resolution accordingly, depending on the type of output you're creating. And also, you can combine this with stereo. So, for instance, if I wanted to do a stereo output side-by-side -side of a cube map, I could turn this on and then render out a stereo cube map. Of course, this is going to be a fairly large render. Uh, and again, the resolution under the film settings will need to be adjusted depending on the type of stereo cube map that you're rendering. So let's turn this back to disabled and go back to spherical. If I take a look at the camera type, we also have baking camera, and this is covered in the guide to uh, baking with Octane for Unity. So you can check that out for more detail on how to use the baking camera. So let's switch back to thin lens camera and let it render for a few minutes. So if you'd like to know more about working with animated cameras and how to render out a sequence of images using Octane, check out the video guide on Recorder. And if you'd like to know more about working with the render settings, uh, check out the video guide on rendering kernels. But that covers the basics of working with cameras using Octane for Unity. Uh, so thanks again for watching.